All right, it's time for another math easy solution to discuss. Well, further into continuity, I did an earlier video on it, and basically now I'm going to go over some examples to basically further illustrate it. Just to recap quickly on continuity, a function f is continuous at a number a. Put this in uh, the little bracket here. If the limit as x approaches a of fx equals f of a, and this definition, like I stated in my earlier video, this implicitly requires that f of a is defined, that is, a is in the domain of f, or you could get an actual value here if you just plug it in, and limit as x approaches a of f of x exists. So this exists, and these are both equal to each other. That's the third requirement. And we say a function is basically discontinuous or not continuous otherwise if they don't if these three requirements aren't met. So now let's look at the first example basically on uh, continuity. Basically this states in the figure below what which numbers is the uh, function f continuous, we just call this f of x right here, and why is it, is it discontinuous? So when we look at this one, well, remember, uh, like in my other video, I, I said if you basically, if you draw the graph and if without removing your pen, that's basically continuous, but then right when you get here, you have to remove it because there's this value is not defined. So then at this number is discontinuous because, well, f of 1 is not defined. So it's not defined. That's what this open circle means. It just means that it has no value. Now, since it uh, has no value right here, you can't put an equal sign, something that's not defined. So then by, based on requirement 1, it's not continuous. So now if we draw, if we just keep going again, as you can see, this is all continuous up to here, then up to the 3. Now there's this big jump right here. Well, this one is equal to, uh, this, this y value of is equal to f of 3. So this is defined, but the limit right here, well, there, the limit doesn't exist right here. Because as you can see, when you go from this side you're gonna get a value of this and then but if you go towards x is equal to 3 we call this x if you go towards it well you're gonna have a different value right here so then the limit does not exist so that's based on number two because remember the left and right hand side of the limit have to be equal in order for the limit to exist right here so this although it's defined the limit doesn't exist right here and I'll just write that down right here, basically at x equals to 3 limit as x approaches 3 of fx does not exist and thus it's discontinuous or not continuous. And now again, once again, you just, if you keep drawing down here, if you don't remove your pen, that's continuous. And now here, this is jump right here, even though now this limit exists. So th this limit exists right here and f of uh, 5 is defined, this point is f of 5. But now f of 5 and the limit don't correlate to each other. They don't equal each other, and that's basically requirement 3. So then thus it's not continuous. And I'll just write that down right here. At x equals to 5, limit as x approaches 5 of f of x is not equal to f of 5. Thus it doesn't exist. Well, um, thus it's not continuous. And then when you go from here to the right, it's continuous all everywhere past the 5. Now let's look at example two. Basically, now we look at uh, trying to find out where it's discontinuous if a function is defined by a formula instead of a graph like the one above. Uh, now let's just uh, look at this one, this example two. Where is each of the following functions discontinuous? So if we look at these four functions, well, let's look at this one first. F of uh, this uh, example a. Now when we look at this example, this is a f of x equals to x squared minus x minus two, all divided by x minus two. Well, the problem with this one here, if you plug in f of 2, this is not defined right here. And this is not defined basically because, well, you can't divide by 0. Right here, if you plug in the 2, you're going to have this number divided by 0. Thus, it's not defined. And in fact, this is continuous at all other values of x. And that's mainly because, well, it's on the top of it is is basically a, pol a polynomial, and I'll show this in a later video that all polynomials are continuous everywhere. And it's basically a rational function, but then a again, this is the only discontinuity. And now if you were to basically graph this function right here, it would look something like this. I've graphed it with Google right here. Basically, you're gonna have, just, it's gonna be actually a straight line, except well, at here, you're gonna have it not defined at this point right here. Uh, but then th this one's in fact it's called yeah discontinuities like this are called removable discontinuities basically because if you just redefine this value at two if you if you defined it basically whatever this value is then it's going to be continuous 
So now let's look at example B. This one just is a two-part uh, two function f x equals to well, 1 divided by x squared and if x is equal to 0 and 1 if x equals to 2. So then f of well, 1 is defined and that equals to, well, I mean not f of 1, f of 0 is defined, that equals to, well, if this x 0 is just equals to 1 right here. But the problem here is that the limit as x approaches 0, well, it doesn't exist right here, 1 divided by x squared, because, well, this one is actually going to go to infinity here. If you're dividing this by anything close to 0, it's going to be a positive infinity, because x squared is always going to be positive. And as you get closer and closer to 0, you're going to actually go to infinity right here. And now if you were to graph this 1 divided by x squared, but then, but except at zero, you're going to have it equal to one right here. As you can see, it, it flies up right here all the way to infinity, and this goes all the way to infinity. So now you're going to have a discontinuity at this zero value right here. And this, uh, this is called yeah, an, an infinite discontinuity. Basically, it goes, goes to infinity over there. And now this function uh, of, of part c, base fx equals to well, x squared minus x minus 2 divided by x minus 2. This is just exactly as example a. It, but except this is only if x is not equal to 2, so now we redefine it if x equals to 2 right here, then we'll just have it 1, so f of 2 is defined now, and that equals just to 1. But the problem is this one right here, well, this this limit actually exists right here. I just write it down in this notation. This exists, so we just have to find out if these are equal to each other, if it equals to 1. Well, what you could do is this equals 2 if we just... Uh, factor this out right here. If I, if you see my earlier video on basically factoring by guessing, what you could do this equals to limit as x approaches two. So find a number that, yeah, uh, like two numbers that basically multiply to equal to negative two and add up to negative one. And one, and uh, those numbers are actually going to be negative two. So you're going to have x minus two times it by x plus one. Because if you were to times this negative 2 by plus 1, you're going to get negative 2. And if you add them, you're going to get negative 1 right here, which is this number right here. And now divide this by x minus 2. And these cancel. And then you're just going to be left with equals to limit as x approaches 2 of x plus 1. And this equals to, we just plug it in, equals to 3. But in this case, you're, you're not going to have the uh, requirement for a continuity, which is the limit here as x approaches 2 of this function has to equal to f of 2. Well, this one is 1, and this one is 3, and this is not equal to each other. And basically, like before, if you were to draw this, you're going to have something like that looks just a straight line, except that now at, at this x equals 2, you're not going to have, you're just going to have this basically this discontinuity over this removable discontinuity like part A, where this limit is actually going to be 3 as you're going towards it, except now your f of 2 is equal to 1 right here, and thus basically it's not equal to each other, and again, this is called a removable discontinuity. And now the last example I'll go over is just basically part d, fx equals to, well, this weird bracket sign of x. Remember in my earlier video, this is actually equal to the greatest integer function. And I'll just yeah, call it right here, greatest integer function. In my earlier video, I showed that basically, well, all this means, you can see the video link below on it, on the greatest integer function, I did an example on it. Basically, all this means is that, what every number you have, you have 3.14, it's just going to go towards the greatest integer, or, or or another way, just put it, just it just goes to whatever this front number is right here. So this is going to be, well, this is going to be 3. So th this, if you put this weird sign around it, this is going to just equal to 3 right here. And also recall that what integer is, basically any, any uh, whole number, it could be negative or positive, and it could be including 0 right here. And uh, like in my earlier video, if you basically were to graph this greatest integer function, basically, if you this is number one, two, three. So as you can see, there's discontinuous actually at every integer. And now the reason it's discontinuous at every integer, well, if you look at right here, if this value, let's say 1.5, you're going to go to the, you're just going to go left, it's going to equal to one. So as you can see, you could draw a straight line. But then if you're getting closer and closer to, let's say, the value of two, you go 1.999, so it's going to be equal to one. But right when you get to two, you're going to get to two right here. And you write it as this one. I don't know, this one has a, this weird value like this, or or you could just basically set it like this one. So my calculus book has it this way. And if you have two, this just equals to two. So as you can see, there's there's going to be a jump right here on every single integer. And in fact, this is called yeah, they're called jump discontinuities, and basically because they jump at every integer, or just that they just have jumping from from whatever value it is. So there's a jump, there's a jump, there's a jump. Well, that's, uh, that's all for today in this video. Hopefully you just basically learned from these uh, examples on, on 
continuity and discontinuity and uh, these are pretty useful examples I'll go over later and, and further examples and further videos on continuity uh, etc but hopefully you learn from this number you can download all these notes in the Dropbox link below and yeah stay tuned for another math easy solution